Jill's office provides friendly, professional receptionists for small business owners just like you. We can help answer your calls and we can even schedule estimates and jobs for you. Try Jill's office today and get a $25 discount when you say untrapped. Just go to jillsoffice.com. Hey, my friend, it's Keith Kelfus. I just want to stop in real quick to say I wish you positivity, success. I want to encourage you. I hope you're crushing it. I hope you are at peace, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're healthy, and I hope you're leaning in the direction of all those things, of abundance and love and peace and prosperity and well-being. And if you're going through hard times, I would say don't resist it. Become very present with those hard times and dive into your inner self. Grab some good books like Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, like Dr. Wayne Dyer on audible.com. You can get his whole compilation, like 101 ways to transform your life. And sometimes when you go through hard things, they're like ego death. It can feel like you're dying, right? It's really tough. And when you go through those hard things, when you just breathe and be present with them, on the other side of that, sometimes it could take maybe a week, sometimes it can take years, but on the other side of that is a whole new chapter of life. And there's a book called Letting Go by Dr. David R. Hawkins that will help you with that type of stuff, right? And so I just want to say that you're not alone. There is an inner candle flame that never flickers, and that is your hope, and that everything's going to be okay. It's funny how Jordan Peterson once said, he goes, no, everything's not going to be okay, right? But I just want to say that have a love affair with yourself. That sounds weird, right? What I'm saying is fall in love with yourself again and have the mindset of a beginner. Say, you know what? I love me. So what if you're not, you don't have X, Y, and Z yet, or you're not where you think you should be at this point in your life and it's causing you a ton of anxiety? What if you just exhaled and said, you know what? My life is beautiful how it is right now, right here, and become happy with the simple things. Just to wake up in the morning and take a shower and feel the water running over your body and to be able to stir a cup of coffee, look out the window and hear your doggy bark. There is an infinite amount of things to be incredibly joyous where you are swimming in total abundance right now, even if you have issues, even if you have a family member that died I was very depressed in 2017 because a bunch of people died in a row, right? That's one thing that would get you depressed. Don't let a funeral be it that what makes you very receptive because death makes you receptive. It makes you like, whoa, okay. It makes you appreciate life. I recently started spending more time with extended family members again that I haven't spent a lot of time with in years. It's like no time had passed. So that's one thing you can call up your friends. More of the Untrapped Podcast, right after this. Hey, if you're looking for what is probably the greatest software ever to run your business on, go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. You can create proposals, invoices, collect payments, even track your entire business directly on the Jobber smartphone app. And if you want to get a totally free trial of Jobber right now, Open your browser, type in getjobber.com forward slash Keith. And if after the trial, you decide you want to sign up with Keith's link, you'll automatically get 20% off your first six months. So what are you waiting for? Go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. This is Untrapped with Keith Kalfas. What I mean is that if your foot is on the gas pedal too hard, I was on the phone with my friend William earlier, and we were talking about that using the Fibonacci sequence in success, like a race car going in a hairpin turn, you got to let your foot off the gas or you will smash right into the wall. There are times to get adequate sleep. You should always get adequate sleep. Eat a healthy diet, get lots of hydration, and then go pedal to the metal for a certain period of time but no win to let your foot off the gas. Another thing I like is, are you the type of person when you're driving in the, your car, or your truck says the check engine light is on, do you just keep pedal to the metal 
or do you pull over and get that thing checked out? For you inside, when you learn how to monitor and you can feel your stress levels, when that check engine light comes on, no matter what, your health is most important. It's not worth a heart attack. And the ego will tell you, yes, because if you have a heart attack, then you get to lay in the hospital and everybody will feel bad for you. You can hold it as a badge of courage or something like that. That's like a total lie, right? That's not a good thing. Dr. Wayne Dyer also talks about somebody who was like repeatedly getting in dramatic car accidents. And he said that now some of you are going to get mad when I say this, but the person was actually manifesting that because they wanted to, this sounds really bad, but like they wanted to be like a victim but really what happens is what he was saying, it's not me. When you are repeatedly getting sick or bad things are happening to you, other people see it as it's like this human nature thing. It's almost like a burden. They feel obligated. That was the word, obligated to come see you in the hospital. It's this whole thing. So what I mean is when you finally get to the point where you realize that nobody cares. And this, I wanted to, like, I feel like I could write a book about this. Did you know you can say nobody cares like a hundred different ways? And each way, in each time you say it, you evolve a little bit more to the point where you're in a place of total freedom. Ho'oponopono, which is, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, and thank you. You take full responsibility for the energy that you bring into this room, your life, your body, the way you interact with other people, the way you get triggered or not. You take responsibility for your emotions. And when you do that, you become a fully... I'm not saying I am but an actualized human being. I've got a lot of work to do. It's like you realize that you actually don't need to have a life that's a living hell. You don't need the car accident. You don't need to go through any more dramatic or traumatic experiences. You've already been through all that shit. And now is the time for you to finally just walk into your destiny. It's now. It's right now. You don't have to go through any more learning lessons. You've been through plenty. And just start applying what you've learned and what you know in your heart to be true. And upgrade your identity. And upgrading your identity might just be letting go and just being present with the life that you have. There's a book called The Power of Awakening. I talk about this book often. I love it. You can have a huge upswing in your health, in your sleep, a lowering of your stress levels and everything by just being and picking this path and being on this path that you've chosen and letting go of other paths, other potential paths. It sounds like dying, right? It sounds horrible. What do you mean letting go, right? We stay in this place of inner conflict and inner struggle where we're sitting on the fence in our emotions. Should I quit this job? Should I stay there? Should I grow my business? Should I shrink it? Should I stay the same? Should I quit my job and go start a business? Should I start this new project or not? Should I buy this thing or not? And I think there's this addictive pattern we have with this dopamine and serotonin and these feelings of these neuropeptides become addicted to those stresses and dramas where the cortisol is pumped through your blood. You feel stressed out and then it edges off. Some people smoke weed, drink alcohol. Some people do hard drugs. Some people meditate. This thing we become addicted to this pendulum. And I think therein lies the dichotomy of life and being in a physical body. Because you're half spirit, half physical. I don't know what percentage you are, but I know I feel the spirit man and then the physical man. The spirit man, the carnal. But the carnal mind is an enmity against God, right? I think that one of the higher places you can get to is when you look in your past and you become, you let go, you forgive, and you become fond of your past. So yeah, I had a, a wonderful childhood. It was beautiful. It was awesome. Like maybe you got your ass whipped 50 or 60 times. Maybe you got a sock shoved in your mouth and you're grabbed by the throat and slammed through the wall. <laughs> like that really happens. But how can you get to the point where you are, you let go of all that stuff and then you become fond and you say, you know what? It's okay. What if your parents sucked? They were assholes. And you'd be like, oh my God, my parents were just kids with kids. They didn't even know what the hell they were doing. They actually tried the best for what they had, what they knew. And they fight and fought and argued all the time. And then I grew up in a traumatic household, right? But your parents were probably just kids themselves with kids. And they did. And for the means that they had, they friggin' crushed it. You're here now. You are here now, right? What a great opportunity. 
when I talk about that stuff, I feel a little disoriented. Like, is this a deep interior space? It's like, whew, there's a sense of, it's not complete, the things that I've said. So maybe we'll just close that now. I won't talk about any of that stuff because I'm not ex an expert or qualified to talk about that stuff. But I know that I've lived in like 32 homes or something. This is our house now. It's our basement. I think I've had, this is my 33rd home or I've had like 32 jobs. <sighs> So it was hard for me to let go and just say, this is my real home. Everything's going to be okay. Because at any moment, it feels like the rug's going to get pulled out from underneath you. It's going to get ripped out from underneath you, right? So you keep checking, checking to see what's real. Some people have actual physical twitches, like Tourette's, where they go, <clears throat> <clears throat> where they blink or they're twitching their shoulder, <clears throat> or they do weird things, or they're constantly like tapping stuff, or they have to, their subconscious mind there's alpha, beta, delta, theta. They go into a dreamlike state where past and present and future and time and space don't actually exist. It's just compressed down to this third density of physical, this primordial experience. And so what I mean is there's a part of the consciousness that when you dream the super conscious and the subconscious, I don't know, but all I can say is they don't know space and time. So part of you actually thinks you're still like six and being abused or something or your life still sucks. And it's still real right now but you're here now it's like the interstellar movie that's why people like twitch and develop habits and drug addictions because they cannot actually face the fact that ego is terrified to just die and let go of its death grip on the amygdala which triggers the fight or flight response and lets you know that okay you're gonna be okay what can you do right now? So when you have a habitualized pattern of being broke, and if you're in debt, you got debt collectors calling you, you got real shit going on, and you need money now. That's like the proverbial saber-toothed tiger chomping away at your bottom line, which is your survival resources, and money is like oxygen. I had these horrible fears. Dr. David R. Hawkins talks about this in Power Versus Force. He says just being exposed to the information itself will radically increase your consciousness. You'll go to the next stage of evolution. So, but when you actually let go, Ken Wilber talks about this in Cosmic Consciousness and the One, Two, Three of God by Tammy Simon. Sounds true on audible.com. Look that up. When you are finally at a place for you, it might take 10, 20, 50, 100 grand in the bank, bills paid off. I don't know. But when you can finally get to a place where you can let go, relax, and you don't feel like you're going to die or end up homeless or lose everything, and you feel, keyword, feel safe for extended periods of time. I'm not saying I even feel that way talking about it, but I know what I'm talking about. When you feel safe and your nervous system relaxes and goes into a place when the sympathetic nervous system relaxes, see that your muscles will unconsciously tension, tensen up, and you have to consciously relax them habitually every day. Relax right now. Try it right now. Just kind of like let your jaw relax. Take a breath. Yawn. <sighs> Just relax. Ah, did you feel that? Did you feel that? You can keep going more and more down, down, down to deeper levels of relaxation. I go get therapeutic massage therapy and go tomorrow morning. I try to go tonight, but they're closed. When you can let yourself, the word was let, give yourself permission consciously and unconsciously and physically, mentally, emotionally to relax. It might take stop eating fast food and meat and stuff that isn't fear, totally different type of video. But when you get rid of fear and you can relax for extended periods of time, it's proven biologically that the cortisol in your blood clears up, the amygdala relaxes, the sympathetic nervous system relaxes, the fight or flight response that's autonomous relaxes and recedes. And when it recedes for an extended period of time, you feel safe and it's over and over and over. It's like, it's no more dark clouds and raining. You're not clinging onto this thing. Oh my God, there's a tornado. Okay, it's really a sunny day. There's little crickets jumping around, birds are chirping, there's sunflowers. Like animals in nature, the gazelle just start to relax and they return back to grazing and being peaceful. Humans are still freaked out years after the event. When you can allow yourself to relax for extended periods of time, it's scientifically and biologically proven that 
your consciousness becomes. Now again, instead of sporadic like this, it relaxes and moves back into a sine wave. Stick around as Keith returns with more of the Untrapped podcast in just a moment. Looking to maximize your production in the field? Ballard Products has over 300 products that can help you get the most out of your efforts every day. Ballard Products. Whether you are looking to get a better cut, keep your gear on your machine, keep your expensive equipment clean and safe, or just get the most out of your machines, Ballard has you covered. Ballard Products. Jump onto our easy-to-use updated website at ballard-inc.com to get your gear ordered today. Keep grinding, Keep grinding. Stay, stay safe, safe, and have a great season. Ballard. Make sure to use the code KEITH10 to save 10% on our full line of gear. That's KEITH10. The Untrapped Podcast continues. Like Fibonacci sequence, there's phi, and then there's d phi. Phi is like, imagine a disc, an album, a CD a nucleus, an atom, a planet, a solar system, a galaxy, a cluster of galaxies. But imagine a disk is spinning. When it's perfectly balanced in harmony, it can spin like so fast. But if there's something that is in DeFi, Phi is balanced, DeFi is imbalanced. When there's an imbalance in the diet, in the nervous system, in your sleep patterns, in your consciousness, in your habits... When you're not aligned with God, there's seven stages and seven levels of truth. (sighs) When you align with truth and spirit is number one and everything aligns and your chakras align, when that happens for extended periods of time, all of a sudden, boom, they say like your third eye opens. Or what I'm saying is that with that sine wave, your DNA will relax. I don't know how this works. I've done a lot of study and research on it thousands of hours literally of audiobooks and like listening to shows on this that the dna will actually start to fire these gene receptors that have been shut off that are stopping your evolution so this is like quantum physics right but it's biology those gene receptors when they feel safe they'll turn on and then they'll light up in these new these dormant switches imagine that there's a big switching station like an electrical box And like 80 of them are on, but 40 of them are off. Some of them will start to turn back on and new lights will turn on in the mansion, in the house. And all of a sudden, boom, when you feel safe, you move out of the primate brain. You move out of the mammalian or the reptilian, the part of the brain of the neocortex, the new brain that's shut off because you're stuck in like lizard mode or fight or flight mode. The brain that's the controller protector that's keeping you like a caveman with blinders up in survival mode (laughs) all the time like a cornered animal, that goes away and all of a sudden the creative brain comes out. Fascinating to me how there's a saying, what's the difference between crazy and eccentric? A million bucks. Some people that are crazy, you're like, dude, that, that dude's crazy. But some people are like, that dude's eccentric and he's a millionaire. Why? If you can allow yourself to be functional and pragmatic and logical in this density and learn how, like I said, the government, the IRS and taxes and business and insurance and structures and systems, I said structures, and build structures of consciousness that, like a circuit board, you build the circuit board and then you flow electricity through it. Or you build tracks and you can ride a train on it. When you get the structure right, then you can, in tandem, grow Your imagination is the highest level of intelligence. Einstein even said it. You have implementation. Myron Golden talked about this. Implementation, just physical work, linear time. Then you have unification, which is managing other people, higher state of consciousness to do leveraged physical work, tons of people. Then you have the highest, which is communication. So your muscles are stuck in linear time. You can only do so much. But your voice, like God said in Genesis In the beginning, let there be light, and there was light. He formed the universe. All sound is matter is sound condensed to a vibration to appear solid, but sound. So your voice carries at the speed of sound and is way more powerful than any physical movement. That's why when you think with your mind and you speak with your mouth, you can move mountains because you speak it into existence. Way more powerful than just doing the physical work. But the highest level of all above that is imagination. It's where you imagine. So if you're stuck all the time in survival mode, 
you actually can't access the states of consciousness that are in imagination. If you can allow yourself to relax and go into a flow state, these beautiful ideas, enthusiasm, you become enthusiastic, which means the God within, it flows. And then you get into this flow state. And this is true. I know this as a fact. I don't know for sure. I got to do the math. But I was doing the math last night. I may be wrong. I may be off. I might be a little bit over calculating. But the math says, so I went from being flat broke. I should not say this. I'm not going to tell you. I don't want to tell you what I'll be making and doing in sales this month because I don't want you to. It has nothing to do with me. But I went from being very poor and broken, broken minded and scarcity consciousness and afraid all the time. And it kept me poor and broke. And I didn't understand how people thought like this. How do you get there? How do you become financially successful? And it is true. What the mind can't conceive and believe it can't achieve. You have to believe it first. You've got to get around successful people. And you vibrate into that higher state of consciousness. And it has no choice but to show up in your physical reality. Even when I say it, it's hard for me to believe. But this month, I will do in sales alone what I used to make in four and a half years years <laughs> in one month it's just sales how is that possible you can't work that hard you can't work that hard but you can put structures and systems in place even when i talk about i have some weird connotations around money that i'm still working on i finished a book called a happy pocket full of money i have a friend named kevin dubrowski he's a wealth coach and he's assigning books for me to read so there's a lot of letting go. I also follow a guy named Chris Duncan from Magnetic Mind, and he does these super conscious recodes. And I've done a lot of hypnotherapy sessions, which have helped me tremendously. And I'm on my way, and I want you to be on your way. I want you to crush it. I want to hear good reports about you. I want to know in the comments below, if you watch this video all the way to the end, I want you to put in the comments below, I am abundant. And when I read that, I will know that you watch this whole video and I will give it a thumbs up and I will remember you because I want to know that you're doing well. Even if we haven't met in person yet, I care about you and I care about your well-being. I care about your life and I care about your future and I want you to crush it. I'm going to wrap up. Go to Keith Kelfa's Untrapped on Apple Podcasts and please leave the show a well-worded positive five-star review. It helps boost the rankings of the show. I really, really appreciate it. Hit me up on YouTube, Instagram, at Keith Kelfa's, and I can't wait to hear about your success, and I'll see you soon.